Hi guys and welcome back to another fly fishing video. So what are we up to this week? Well I've been very kindly sent one of the new superb RS13 fly reels from Hanak Competition. And what I want to do today is give you my initial impressions of the reel out the box. And I also want to show you how I'm going to set it up to Euronymph with this reel. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's get the box open then. The reel comes in different colours, you can have it in black and red, matte black or a matte olive. Now the one I've got here, uh, I don't know how well you can see the box, but it's ticked as the matte olive. So we'll just put that to the side and it comes in a neoprene pouch for protection. Now when I take it out, uh, something I've learned quite recently actually from uh, a friend of mine, Stuart McBean, he said to me when you've got a new reel, a good test is to hold the reel itself and see how much movement's in the cage. And uh, the movement here is very slight, which uh, is good, good news. It looks um, like a very nice reel. I really like the colour, and I think the colour's there to complement the series of RS rods. If you follow the channel, you know I reviewed the dry fly rod last year, and sadly I had to hand that back at the end of the year. Uh, I nearly bought it, I nearly bought it, but it was too near Christmas, and I ended up having to hand it back. But um, So, this reel, it comes with a sealed drag, and... If I just open it up for you, we can have a closer look at the drag system. Now, you'll know sealed drags because there'll be no cogs or anything on display. It's all kept inside the reel and hopefully on the outside where you control the drag is a dial number to let you know what setting you've got the reel. Now, a lot of the, the reels for River and Stream they don't have drag systems, and a lot of people will argue that for trout fishing, you don't really need a drag. All the reels for is holding line. Now, I, I kind of agree with that for probably 98% of your fishing, but there's just that one time where you catch that special fish and you'll be thankful for a good drag. Now, this, this starts at um, one, and at one, there isn't really much of a much of a resistance I've got to say. So I'll just jump it straight up to five. Now when you're setting up your rod and line you've got to make sure that you've got your drag set to an acceptable level that won't just see your tippet separate from the fly because the fish has hit it too hard and you've got your drag set too tightly. So at five it still feels quite gentle to me. Very smooth pickup on the inertia. So I'm going to bump it up to eight and the resistance is really starting to kick in at eight now and uh, probably a little too much for me. So if I bring it down to seven, that feels like it will protect the tippets I'll be using for Euronymphing. So typically while Euronymphing, I'll be fishing tippets from 0 0.07 up to about 0 0.1112 depending on the situation. So, as I say, it looks pretty good to start with, and we're going to get it ready for Euronymphing. So what's next? Now, when I got this reel, I did debate for some time whether to put a, a floating line on it and, and use it just as a normal dry fly fishing rod, but the honest truth is I think I spend a lot more time Euronymphing, and the reel will get a better run out uh, from me doing that. So, what equipment will I need to set up the reel for Euronymphing? Now, I suppose traditionally most people put backing line on and then they'll put a fly line on and then they may add their French leader. Uh, I don't see the point of that, so what I'm going to use is some braided monofilament backing here um, that's going to fill up the bulk of the reel. I've got myself uh, a hens French leader, this is a 900 centimetres, so a 9 metre leader. I've got some of this stuff which I'm going to show you in more detail later. It's called Miracle Braid. And you'll also need uh, some coloured floss. I'm using uh, just this pink stuff. And you'll need some super glue and a pair of scissors. So, first things first, let's get 
the backing onto the reel. Okay, the first thing to do then is get the braided monofilament onto the reel. So I've opened the reel up, I have the two parts here. Now the reel itself, what I want to do is take some of the braid and feed it through the actual reel. The next thing I'm going to do is create a loop, like so. And I want to bring in my spool and catch it with the loop. Now I'm going to tighten this up onto the spool. Now as a matter of belts and braces, I always like to add a couple of half hitches onto my loop, nice and tight. And if you wanted to be real pedantic about this, you could always add a touch of super glue to your knot. But uh, I'm not going to worry about that. Don't want to get super glue over Franter's reel. Uh, if the worst case scenario should happen, and you have got down to your back end, this will hold like that. Next thing then, we're going to put our reel back together. Now just make sure that it's come through the cage and you're not going to trap that in there. Tighten up the knob and we're ready to reel up. Now depending on what way you like to reel, I like to play the fish in my right hand and I reel forwards with my left. Everyone will be different. People tell me there's a right way and a wrong way. I would say it's what's right for you. So in my case, I want to reel forward. So I'm going to just get it started like so. The next thing, with the braid here, I don't, I'd normally get one of my kids, I'd put a pencil through here and I would get them to hold it while I reeled up. I don't have that luxury today, they've all gone downtown to spend my money. So what I've done is I've repurposed my fly tying vise and stuck a bodkin needle in. Then all I need to do is pop my braid on like so and then I'm ready to reel. Now, it just needs to be done very gently. It's much easier with another person, I might add. So if you've got a friend or a kid that's prepared to take a bribe, I would advise you to definitely tap them up. So all I'm going to do is speed this section up so you don't have to watch me uh, winding it on. But I do want to fill the reel to almost capacity. That's me got the monofilament on, it's now time to attach the French leader. Next then, we're going to add our French leader to our monofilament. First thing I want to do is get it out the bag and find the thick end of the French leader. Now, this can be a little tricky. Once you've found it, you want to just take it off enough as to give yourself something to work with. You don't want to uncoil it all at this point because uh, it does get, it can get a little messy, should I say. So just enough to work with. So I've got about four or five inches off and what I want to do is I'm now going to feed it into the braid. Now this can be fiddly, but once you've got it started, it should feed up into, into that monofilament. Getting started can be a little fiddly, but once it gets going, it becomes quite easy to push the braid and feed your French leader into the center of the core. And I'm fairly happy that I've now got enough of the French leader up into the braid. So next thing then, I'm going to take my floss that I have here and I'm simply going to start whipping round it. Now again, this looks a bit more difficult than it actually is. Getting started is the hardest part. Once you get going, it does become 
a lot easier. Now the braid wants to fray out a bit, you've got to try and prevent that. And then once you get going, you'll find that you're catching it all in, no problem at all. If you need to um, bring some of the braid off the reel just to make it a little easier. And what we want to do is to create a nice smooth transition between the French leader and the monofilament. So when if it does, worst case scenario, I mean nine meters is a lot when you're when you're nymphing. If a fish is taking your French leader out of your rod top rod ring, um, it's obviously a good fish. So what you don't want to do is have a big bump that's going to cause your reel not to do its job, which is to to slow the inertia of the line down. So I'm going to just keep building that up. Keep it nice and tidy. I'm just trying to make sure I've got everything sucked in there. And then to finish off, what I'm going to do is create a loop in my line. I'll bring that through. And that's why I wanted to keep the French leader pretty much intact to make this bit a little easier. And all I've done is effectively put a little whip in there. Now the next thing, I'm going to just hold all the ends. I'm going to come in with my super glue. and just seal all that up. I'll just turn it round, put the super glue pot down so I don't spill it. Now what I'll do is I'll put this to the side to dry and then I'll give it another coat once I've taken away all the uh, the tails and stuff. So I'm just going to detach the floss. Try not to cut your French leader. I'll use the reel as a weight. Hang that over the side of my bench, and then I'll just wait for that to dry. The next thing we've got to do then is attach the inner core of our miracle braid to our French leader. So I've unfurled the French leader, and what I've done is I've taken the very thinnest bit off and brought it to about the same width as my Miracle Braid. Now what I want to do is get the Miracle Braid and just put a surgeon's knot in. So I'm going to use three turns. One. Two and three. Now I'm going to dampen this down with some saliva like so and tighten it all up. Now normally with your knots what you would do is come in with your scissors and trim them away nice and flush with your line. But what I like to do is leave the tag ends, not too, not as pronounced as this, but about a centimetre and a half each side. And what that does, once it's coloured in with wax, it really stands out against the skyline when you're actually nymphing. All we've got to do then to finish off is wind on our French leader. Try and keep it nice and evenly spaced. Now obviously with a large arbor in the design of this reel, it's just perfect for keeping that leader. Sorry, I keep catching uh, the wheel of my chair there. And uh, it keeps the leader on a big spool. So when you bring it out to fish, I often find with the French leaders, and if you run your hand through your French leader, get a bit of heat in it, it does help to smooth it out so that you've got direct contact to your bugs. All that remains then is to add either a tippet ring or 
you can tie a perfection loop or a puller knot whatever's going to suit your purposes i'm going to just uh use this little micro ring that i've got here and i'm just going to use an improved clinch knot for that just dampen down the knot pull it tight and again this little tag that i've created i'm just going to leave on then i can come in with my snips and remove the end now this uh, tippet ring that i'm using here uh, is a little bigger than what i usually use but unfortunately i've run out of them and uh, i need to get some more and i'll replace that as and when they arrive well that's uh, how i've attached this french leader to this brand new hanak rs13 reel it's not the only way of doing it and it's certainly not competition legal so for those of you out there that are entering phipps moosh competitions you cannot set your line up like this your leader your french leader must be i think it's twice the length of the rod is the maximum you're allowed to use uh, for your french leader whereas i've obviously got a, a nine meter one here which is much longer than any of the rods I own. It's not the only way of doing it, but it's the way I've chosen to set it up. Now, I've chosen purposefully not to put a fly line on this, and the reason for that is I have only got the reel for the season. I've got to hand it back, and when I finish uh, doing the, the review, uh, I want to be able to just hand it over and not be worried that I've handed over one of my fly lines with it. But uh, I really appreciate Fran sending it out to me and letting me have a go. And I can't wait to take it to Slovenia to see how it performs. Thanks for watching the video. Before I go, I'd just like to apologise for the lack of fishing videos. Now, um, I've not been able to get out fishing at all is the honest answer i've been very busy with work and various other things have um, prevented me from hitting the water but in the coming weeks i intend to be doing quite a lot of fishing so you can look forward to many more fly fishing videos thanks for watching and i appreciate your support